Hello, 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 gorgeous human beings. Ah, El Naji coming here, coming to you live after a week of a sensational head cold, hence the tongue is still tied and twisted, but I'm on the mend, which is fantastic. Coming to you live from the realm of the unapologetic woman and wanted to come in after a sensational soiree call yesterday. And many things were discussed on the call, as all the calls always tend to have many things that are discussed. And if you are a businesswoman who's seeking a space for rich conversation, then come as my guest. The link will be down below in the description. But I have written down in my calendar that this is a topic that I wanted to come and share with you um, with regarding compassionate observation and why this feminine principle is critical for our upgrade in consciousness. And it's something that has been brought to my awareness more and more and more. So when yesterday it came through very strongly in the conversation on the soiree, I knew that I couldn't wait for the remainder of the head cold to dissipate for me to come and share this and that it's time for me to talk about compassionate observation, what it is, why now, why it's important and why for you as the driven, high achieving, empire creating, iconic woman, compassionate observation is the feminine principle that can change everything for you. Think first and foremost, if you're new in my world, say hi in the comments, let me know who you are and where you are dialing in from. And if you're watching the replay, then just hashtag replay, I always come back and I read all the comments and I answer all the comments. And if I know you, hey friends, so good to see you and always a delight to play with you. So it's always good to see old friends' names pop up as well. I won't lie, that is, um, it brings to mind the law of oneness and that we are all one. And just because we're not necessarily physically in each other's presence all the time doesn't mean that we are disconnected. So Wherever you are watching this from in this very moment, just know that we are connected. Everything that I am sharing with you is not new information. It is something that you inherently know as well. And my role is just to remind you to just bring to top of mind the deep wisdom that is residing within you as you and I are one. And we are both connected to source energy. So this is nothing new that I'm sharing. Um, this is just top of mind reminder for everybody who is tapping into this conversation. And I do trust that you are listening to this conversation for a reason. Like It's not coincidence that you came across this conversation. So I want you to borrow that belief of mine because everything happens for a reason and in divine timing. So there's no coincidences. When we start looking at masculine and feminine, and I talk about this a lot because I come from a background of being extraordinarily in my masculine energy, as most high achieving women are today, because that's simply how we were conditioned in the time of humanity that we chose to come into our physical bodies. We chose to come in at a time when it was predominantly societies being built predominantly on masculine energy, on the hustle, on the drive, on the massive amounts of exhaustive action, on pain for gain. And I'm not making any of that wrong. And I want to continue to highlight that if that is where you are finding yourself and it is fun for you, and you are thriving, then enjoy it. Because I did. I, I truly, I loved being that woman. I loved training up to eight hours a day, 
whilst having my business, whilst raising two children, whilst being married at the time, my life was chock and block full, packed from, from sunrise to sunset. Well, that's a lie because I got up before sunrise and I went to bed past sunset. But I loved it. I, I truly loved being that woman. And so I will never make her wrong ever, ever, ever. But that wasn't my entire life path. My life path took me to a place where I got the opportunity and I took it. And I'm grateful that I'm the woman who took the opportunity as well. I had the opportunity to go deeper and to remember who I truly am, to remember what I truly am and to heal by reclaiming the parts of myself that I have abandoned along the way in order for me to achieve in the way that I was taught to achieve, in the way that I was conditioned to think, conditioned to be, conditioned to show up. We are all conditioned. I think that if we if we sit there and we go, oh, not me. No, no, honey, I got a get out of conditioning free card. Well, that's probably not the case because we are born in the same time. We're both here. It's not exactly the same here, but we're both here. And right now, humanity is being conditioned into the masculine from a space of fear, the fear frequency, which is why you are still hearing so many well-intentioned people saying that you have to feel the fear and do it anyway, that you have to constantly do things that make you uncomfortable, that you have to be in that constant state of fear, anxiety, discomfort, because they're very in their masculine. And for the masculine, the, there's a disconnect with emotions. There's a disconnect with emotions. I remember sitting on my bike um, and, and I would proudly say, oh, of course I have feelings too. I feel hungry sometimes. <laughs> I was so disconnected to my emotions because emotions is in the realm of the feminine. The masculine is the mechanics. The feminine is the spirit. Our emotions, and I'm still listening to women saying that I must control my emotions. I must get my emotions under control. <laughs> Good luck with that. Our emotions are not here to be controlled, manipulated, or ignored. Our emotions are powerful messages from our souls, our spirit, our inner beings. To create awareness in us of our thoughts, the direction of our thoughts and the vibration of our thoughts from where we can consciously choose whether we want to keep on with that direction of thought or whether we want to change the direction of thought, thereby changing how we feel, thereby changing our state of energy. And from there, we take the inspired action, which is not in fear, it's in love. It's in confidence, it's in certainty, it's in self-guidance. So you don't want to control your emotions. You want to understand your emotions. So that's a critical part of all of this. Because the masculine is not in the realm of emotions, of feelings, when we are conditioned in the masculine, we are conditioned to criticize, to critique the mechanics. And it's um, coming from a mental space. It's purely mental. What is wrong with this? Remember, the masculine is looking for solutions. The masculine wants to fix the problems. So in order for you to fix the problem, you have to find what's wrong, what's broken, so that you can fix it, so that you can change it, so that you can find the solution. But one of the reasons why men traditionally have been way better at this than women is because they were taught to, from a very young age, not to feel. 
And so they can be a little bit disemotional, unemotional in their critique because their desire is so strong for the solution, for the creation of the, the solution, that they keep the emotion out of it. Traditionally, women, the feminine, which is the emotion, don't do so well with that. So we had to self-abandon that part of us in order for us to become, what's the problem? How do I fix it? Here's the issue with that, ladies. <laughs> we did it from an unhealthy space. And so what we started doing is to self-criticize in a, an essence of self-shaming. Oh my God, I am so broken. I am so screwed up. I am so messed up. I have to be fixed. I have to improve. All of this is coming from a space of shame. It doesn't feel good. I feel hard on myself. Oh my God, look at my cellulite. Oh my God, my tits are sagging because I'm over 50. Like all of that comes from a space of self-abandonment, self-shaming. So when we go into this level of critique, especially of ourselves, we're only lowering our vibration. So yes, we, we then start taking radical actions, starving ourselves, training ex insane, hustling our asses off, doing all the work, outworking, outplaying, out everything, everybody. And we're exhausted. We're exhausted. And then we say, oh, I lived a good day today because I am absolutely washed out exhausted, down on the floor, can't do this anymore. <claps> Naughty badge, girlfriend. The feminine, because she dwells and creates from the realm of how she feels, has learned compassion. Has learned compassion. What is compassion? Compassion is empathy for what is, whilst holding the truth of what is. The empathy with what is, while holding the truth of what is. So when we start coming from a space of compassionate observation, we observe ourselves through the eyes of source with absolute love. Everything is perfect. I am perfect. Everything is working out perfectly. I'm not getting this wrong. This is the perfect body for me for this time in my life. This is the perfect business, the perfect voice, the perfect lover, the perfect everything is perfect for this time in my life. From where to enhance and elevate and ascend into who I have already become spiritually, in spirit. So compassionate observation is when we start observing our thoughts about ourselves. We start observing the actions that we are taking because of the thoughts of ourselves, but not from the space of shaming or this is wrong, but from a space of genuine curiosity. Oh, it's really interesting. Okay, why am I thinking that about myself? And if what I'm thinking is not feeling fantastic, what is the truth that my inner being already knows and holds for me? Compassionate observation is the key to unlocking your greatest potential. It is the key to unlocking your extraordinary life by being your most extraordinary self. Compassion comes from love. When we are finding ourselves in the shadow masculine of critique, that comes from shame. I hope you can feel the difference in this. 
So when I'm compassionately observing myself, what I'm finding is, first of all, I am way more open to being open. I am way more open, naturally, confidently, unafraidly to observe myself because I understand that it's coming from love. I understand that it's coming from a space of genuine curiosity with the purpose of ascension. Not to fix myself because I'm not broken. Sweetheart, you are not broken. There is nothing about you that you need to fix. Nothing. But there's always opportunity for us to evolve. There's always source who we truly are. What we truly are is eternal evolution. Source does not criticize what is, for it understands that it's in a constant state of evolution. I am in a constant state of evolution, and I will continue to evolve even after my body is back to dust. Because I am source energy, evolving source energy through my uniquely human experience and as I am evolving and as I am evolving source consciousness I am given and I am taking the opportunity to support others in a more intentional self-evolution as well but what I'm sharing now is going to be different from what I'm sharing in a year from now or two years from now doesn't detract from what I'm sharing right now. It is just evolving into whatever will be shared next, which is perfect. But what I am seeing is so many women are not taking inspired, aligned action, are not using their voices in the most powerful and beautiful ways, are not actually living their most fulfilling, satisfying brilliant, extraordinary lives because they think, they have a belief that I am not ready yet, I am not right yet, I am not perfect yet, I am not worthy yet, I am not whatever that is for you yet. And once I have done all the shit they're telling me that I have to do and fixed all the things that they are telling me that I have to fix, then I will be worthy of showing up in my brilliant, unapologetic self and share myself with the world. And that is the lie. That is is the shame, that is the, the shadow masculine critique, and I'm inviting you today to surrender that, to leave that behind, and to bring into yourself, to embody the feminine principle of compassionate observation. I am perfect and divine in this moment. I know that I know everything that I need to know in order for me to show up as my most powerful self in this moment and that who I will be tomorrow will be an evolution of this experience. But I am enough in this moment for the most sensational moment. And from that space, I observe any thoughts that are coming up, how I am feeling, how I'm feeling about the thoughts, what is my vibration, am I feeling confident, free, open, creative, intentional, iconic, sensational? Because then I know that I am aligning myself with the truth of who I really am. Not the truth as defined by humanity of my external environment in this moment, because this external environment is the creation of yesterday's thoughts. But I am creating my tomorrow's external environment. And of course, time is an illusion. So when I say yesterday and tomorrow, I'm not necessarily saying 24 hours and I am. But who I am choosing to be today is the script, the spell that I'm casting into universal fabric of who I choose to be tomorrow and what it is that I'm choosing to create for myself to experience tomorrow. It is so powerful. 
It is so powerful. But I keep the critical mind for the mechanisms that I am creating, the structures that I'm creating in my business because I want to be able to stand apart from that and go, this is working in the business, that's not working in the business. This is working in my eating, well, that's not working in my eating. This is working in my relationships, that is not working in my relationships. I need to be able to discern those things, but that comes from a healthy masculine paradigm. I have found in my experience that does not happen until we embrace and embody the feminine principle of compassionate observation. And we won't do that until we stop the idea that we have to control our emotions and we take the time to figure out what our emotions mean, what is it that they're telling us, what is the alignment that I get to find in this moment before proceeding with the observation. Shame will never get you to greatness. Shame will never get you to greatness. But love means you are greatness. Because you truly are, my friend. You are magnificence in human form. Please write that down on a piece of paper somewhere. I am magnificence in human form. Meditate on that. Think about that. What does that mean to you? I am magnificence in human form. I am God in human form. I am source in human form. Evolving God. Evolving source. Evolving spirit. Evolving consciousness through my unique human experience. And I want to say this as well. Your unique human experience doesn't have to be continuous and endless pain and suffering. I know for a lot of people, that's what they're being taught. And so that is what they create. And then the world looks at them and goes, but see, Al, we are all here to suffer. That's an individual choice. And part of that choice is, do you choose to stay conditioned? Or do you choose to unleash yourself from the conditioning? It's why I say we live our legacies unleashed, unlimited, and unapologetic. Because you will not allow yourself to live unlimited until you've unleashed yourself from the conditioning. And that starts with awareness. If you're not willing to be aware of the conditioning, you will not unleash yourself, my friend. So this is my invitation to you to start becoming aware of where you are criticizing yourself from a space of self-shaming in the process self-abandoning. And how can you start upgrading to compassionate observation? Such a powerful feminine principle. I really hope that this one lands for you. All right. So at this present time, there are only two ways to work with me. And when I say work with me, it is really being in my space for you to calibrate to who you truly are so that you can embody the greatness that I know you are. Hence, I wrote the little book of Big Principles for Greatness. Like, seriously, this is such a powerful book. If you guys have not read this yet, it is short. It is sweet. It is written with the intent that you can read it once and then you can sit and implement it again and again and again. Because you are greatness. And until you recognize that and claim that for yourself, everything else will come from a space of struggle. So read the book. It's, um, I'll put the link down below as well for you. It's from Barnes & Noble. But the only two ways that you can play with me at the moment to calibrate to your greatness is either through private work. And if this is that something that you're feeling called to, I, I want to say this as well. You don't need to work with me. You do not need to work with me. I only work with people who want to work with me. I'm not your savior. I'm not your fairy godmother. I'm not going to sprinkle fairy dust on your ass and magically transform you. 
you must want to work with me, to play with me, for me to consider playing with you. You come as my equal, not here to save anybody. But if you do want to play with me and you love being in a private container, then book a consultation. Let's figure out, first of all, who you are being at the moment and who you know yourself to be and if I am the right person for that calibration. So the consultation is the first step for that. And honestly, I'm going to say this as well. Only book that if you're actually serious about partnering with me, not because you want, I don't know, <laughs> you're out gathering information. I'm not in the business of information. I'm, I'm in the space of transformation. Or else, if you are a businesswoman, come and play in the soiree. Come and play in the soiree. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. And it's beautiful to see the natural transformation of women without them having to do any work. It just happens through rich, or as my beautiful member Liar says, thick conversations. <laughs> Love you, Laya. Um, okay, so those are the two ways that you can play with me at the moment. If those are not aligned for you, read the book. If that's aligned for you, and again, please don't do anything because you think you need to do it. Do it because you want to do it. Good because Do it because you love yourself and you kind of go, I adore myself and I want to live even better. I want to calibrate to my even better because there always is an already even better version of myself inside now available to me in this moment, every moment. Constant and eternal evolution, baby. Would love to hear from you guys. What are you taking away from this? If this does resonate with you, please like, share, comment so we can get this work out to more and more women who honestly, it's it's time for us to, to upgrade. It is time for us to upgrade as women into our most powerful selves. And it doesn't happen until we have an awareness until we have an awareness. So please do share this with people that you feel can really benefit from this work. Um, if you want to play with me, you know how to. And if you want to hit subscribe and you will be notified of my next live. Um, and I look forward to us having that conversation. So until next time, my friend, it's Live Our Legacies, Unleashed, Unlimited and Unapologetic. You know I love you. Cheers.